Hey guys, Anthony here. So if you're moving to Georgia, there are things that you must know before moving here. In this video, I'm covering 15 of those things. Let's begin. Hey guys, my name's Anthony Laborde and I'm a realtor here in Atlanta, Georgia. First of all, thank you for coming to my channel. This is where I make videos about living, working, playing here in the Atlanta metro area. I've been in Atlanta my entire adult life, over 25 years, and absolutely love it. I love learning about it. I love sharing the information with you people, and I love helping getting you moved here and finding the home of your dreams. But in this video, I'm talking about 15 things you have to know before moving to Georgia. It's just gonna make your move here that much easier. Let's jump right in. So the first thing on our list you must know is the state bird. Most people think it's the sweet little brown thatcher. Wrong, it's the mosquito. Mosquitoes are out of control here. If you've ever been to the south or anywhere near the coast, you know how bad they can get. They can get massive, they do bite you, they do hurt. If you're allergic to them, it swells up. It's just ugly and nasty. Every year, the pest control company, Orkin, puts out a report on the worst cities for mosquito problems. Guess which city got number one for the seventh year in a row? Number two on the list, and I get this question a lot, is when is it pollen season? When's it allergy season? That's the wrong question to ask. The question should be, when is it not allergy season? See, most people here in the South believe that allergy season just happens in the spring when you see that yellow pine, that heavy pollen that just basically covers everything in sight. It's all over your car, it's all over everything. Ironically, most people aren't even allergic to that yellow pine. Here in the South, most people are actually allergic to tree pollen. Tree pollen can begin as early as January, February. Usually in February, we start to see alder and maple. Then in March and April, we have juniper, elm, oak, alder, even more alder. And then the weeds start to populate. Uh, and then it gets into the summer and you even have more pollen. So again, that, that allergy season can start as early as January, February and go all the way until November. Some people may be asking, Anthony, why do you have such an allergy problem? Why do you have such a bug problem? Is it just the heat there? Exactly. That brings us to number three. Here in the South, if you've never been down here during the summertime or pretty much any time during the year, you haven't really experienced true humidity and true heat here in Georgia. It can start getting warm, I swear, in around February, uh, March, and last all the way until November. And it's an easy 80s, 90s, sometimes in the hundreds, you get in June, July, and August. So what that does, because we have such an early summer and it lasts us so long, bugs, and especially mosquitoes, they love to thrive in this type of environment. So we get a lot of rain at the beginning of the, the summer season when that heat starts coming in and then you get sitting water. That's what breeds all of these mosquitoes and mosquito beds. And then because of the heat starting so early, you get all the blooms early. So we, we have an early spring almost every year. It's beautiful. I mean, all the flowers and azaleas and everything, it blooms around here and it's so gorgeous. But you get all the pollen, you get all that tree pollen, uh, the grass that's blooming, all of that in the air, and that causes the allergies along with the bugs, but it's the heat. The fourth thing on our list that you must know about the state of Georgia is that it is a massive, massive sports state. If you are into any sports whatsoever, it does not matter what it is, fishing to bowling to football to baseball to lacrosse to you name it, it is here in Georgia. Georgia alone has 17 professional sports teams, 17 sports teams. That's so crazy. And you know, here in the South, we love our race and we have 22 racetracks and drag strips here. Uh, Dawsonville, which is right outside of uh, Atlanta here, is considered one of the birthplaces of NASCAR. Georgia Racing Hall of Fame is located in, NAS in uh, Dawsonville. Bill Elliott, Chase Elliott, they're both from Dawsonville. I think a couple of other drivers are from there. So just a huge, huge racing community. In addition to that, and all the professional sports teams, we have collegiate sports here. This area is a massive, massive college. Uh, not only have Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia Southern, uh, but then all around us. Think about Tennessee and South Carolina and Alabama and Georgia and Florida and Kentucky and all this whole Southeast Conference, Atlanta and Georgia's right smack in the middle of it all. We have seven Division I schools here, 16 Division II schools, eight division three schools. We have 13 schools that are in the NAIA. Uh, don't forget in 1996, we had the Summer Olympics here and we have 10 gold medalists that are from the state of Georgia. If you love sports, you're gonna love living in Georgia. So I just mentioned all those colleges and universities that we have here just in Atlanta metro area, but that brings us to number five on the list and that is Georgia's 
education system. Here in the Atlanta metro area, we have some of the very best schools in all of Georgia and in all the country, especially up in Marietta, East Cobb, uh, Fayetteville, Dawsonville. I mean, all of these surrounding areas have phenomenal, phenomenal schools, plus all the higher education. We have all these colleges. We have up to 50 colleges and universities just here in the Atlanta metro area and the surrounding areas, just a hotbed of education. That brings us to number six on the list, and that's the number of corporations we have here. Atlanta is just a booming, booming economy. So we have all of this education, all these higher ed institutions here. Then we have all of these corporations located here, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, UPS. I mean, all these monster companies, Delta Airlines, all of their headquarters are here in Atlanta. So it, it feeds off of one another. They're all recruiting out of all these universities. Those universities are recruiting out of the top high schools in the country, all located here in Georgia. So the next thing on our list is the cost of living here in Georgia. If you've seen my very first video ever post posted right there, it was on uh, cost of living here in Atlanta. That was about a year ago. Things have changed a little bit, but even though we're the ninth largest city in the US, we're the fourth fastest growing, our economy is booming, our cost of living is still substantially lower than the other major metro uh, cities in the US. And I'll give you an example. If you're moving from Dallas, Texas here, and I'll give you two numbers. Uh, the first one is the overall cost of living difference and then the housing difference. That's usually the main metric that gets the most attention is how, what's the difference in the housing prices there. Uh, so if you're moving from Dallas, Texas to Atlanta, we are 3% lower overall cost of living than Dallas, Texas. We're 10% lower on the housing. From Chicago, 19% lower and 39% less on the housing. Moving from Portland, 23% lower, 47% lower on the housing. Are you coming from Philly? 15% lower cost of living, 30% lower on the housing. And then finally, if you're moving from Los Angeles, and I didn't even throw New York in there. If you're moving here from Los Angeles, 31% lower cost of living, 60% lower cost of housing. That blows my mind. I get clients out here from all these cities all the time, and it's shocking to them to see how much they can get for their house with just pennies on the dollar. Cost of living here in Georgia, especially here in Atlanta metro area, a-okay. So the next one on our list of things you need to know is about our taxes. Now, uh, we are not blessed to be one of those states that doesn't have an income tax or a sales tax. Uh, unfortunately, we have taxes for everything here. Uh, however, we're not the most expensive. We're not the cheapest. We kind of fall right there in the middle. I'll give you an example here. So our sales tax um, of all the states that do charge sales tax, the combined state and local tax uh, here in Georgia is 7.31%. That puts us at 19th. Uh, on the um, on the ranking chart of the states. Our property tax is number 33. On average, we charge about $1,100 a year in property taxes. Um, that's pretty good, actually. So we're number 33 down the list of um, most expensive down to the least expensive, we're number 33. And then finally, income tax. Yes, we get charged an income tax here, which is crazy to me, but it comes in at number 26. We average $1,054 a year. So. Taxes are unfortunately something you gotta pay here in Georgia. Uh, we're not the highest, we're not the lowest. We do get you. However, a couple things to keep in mind, especially here in Cobb County, if you are 62 years or older, you get a tremendous amount of tax breaks. Property taxes go down substantially. You get rid of all your school tax. There's a number of tax breaks on other ones. Uh, and actually in the Atlanta metro area, depending on what county you live in, they have a breakdown of uh, discounts they give for seniors 62 and above. And some of that depends on how much money you're making post-retirement, depends on how much of a tax break you get. So number nine on our list is Georgia is the leader in the country in terms of farmer's markets. We have every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, we have over a hundred farmer's markets that go on all across the state. Atlanta Metro has a ton of them going on. North Georgia, up in Helen, Dahlonega, the Blue Ridge Mountains. There's farmers markets go on and then down south in Macon and Savannah farmers markets all over the place and this is a really cool place every weekend where local farmers can come and uh, sell produce vegetables fresh fruit um, organic fresh fruit just really cool delicious uh, grown by local farmers but then also local small businesses can come there and set up booths sell their crafts their products but it's usually focused on local businesses local farmers and really has a flair for that local uh, community feel. Just a really cool place to come check out the farmer's market. Number 10 on our list is not only the oldest city in the state of Georgia, but it's one of the oldest cities in the country established in the late 1700s. Brings us to Savannah, Georgia. If you've never been down to Savannah, it is amazing. 
uh, it's hard to put it into words just how incredible this city is and what a uh, a flashback in time it is with the cobblestone streets and the trolley cars and the weeping willows and the the moss growing on the buildings like it is just such a fascinating city uh, the architecture there the food the nightlife the river that runs through there you have the old riverboat cruises that come through there just a fascinating city if you've never been there so rich in history it will blow your mind all kinds of tours historical tours uh, just a super cool city when you come to georgia go check out savannah coming in at number 11 on the list georgia is also home to the country's largest swamp the Okefenokee Swamp down in southeast Georgia, right near the Florida uh, Georgia line. It's 440,000 acres, 700 square miles, formed over 6,500 years. It's one of the nation's natural wonders. Interesting fact about Okefenokee Swamp. I love saying that word. Back in 2007, there was a lightning strike there in the swamp that started the state's largest wildfire ever. Burned over 600,000 acres, over 900 square miles, but it started right there in the middle of the swamp from a lightning strike. Now, number 12 on our list is the longest hiking only footpath trail in the world begins or ends, depends on where you start, here in Georgia, the Appalachian Trail is 2,200 miles, starts or ends in Georgia, goes up to Maine, vice versa, has over 3 million visitors a year. It covers over 464,000 feet in elevation and goes through 14 states. So the Appalachian Trail, I actually have a buddy of mine that's done the hike through. It takes about six months to do the whole thing, depending on how fast you're going. Uh, but it starts here in Georgia or ends here in Georgia if you're coming from Maine. Number 13 on our list is that the state of Georgia is home to the world's busiest airport here in the Atlanta metro area. We have the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, covers over 4,700 acres, has five runways, international runways, moves over 110 million people through our airport every single year. Just an amazing facility if you've ever been in it. One of the most efficient and effective run airports in the world. It's the busiest located here in Georgia. It was formed over 350 million years ago with the formation of the Blue Ridge Mountains located here in the Atlanta metro area, often incorrectly referred to as the largest piece of granite exposed here in the U.S. It's actually the largest piece of quartz here in the U.S. It's a massive, massive dome rock. Sits about 850 feet above the surrounding sea level, about 1,700 feet above the actual sea level. It's now a federally protected park. So you can go out there and there's rides, there's wind winter wonderland during the winter time. There's all kinds of summer festivities and festivals during the summer, um, but just a really cool park. Uh, you can climb the dome. There's a trolley that goes up to the top or you can walk up there, but you can see it from all over the Atlanta area. Just a really cool piece of geological history here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And finally, number 15 on our list. And if you hadn't figured it out yet, it's all the things to do here in Georgia. Guys, Atlanta metro area, Savannah, Columbus, Macon, Augusta, that's where the Masters is held. So many things to do if you love the indoors, the outdoors, the sports, the restaurants, the cuisine, the plays. Just there's an endless list of things to do. If you're thinking about moving to Georgia, make the move. There's so much opportunity here, so many job opportunities, so much business growing, so much education, the suburbs, the neighborhoods, living in the city, out of the city. Our cost of living is low. You just can't go wrong living in the state of Georgia. I hope you enjoyed this list. Reach out to me if you're thinking about making a move or you're relocating here. I have a team that I work with, Laborde Realty Group, can help you get moved here. Find the home of your dreams. I'd love to help you out. So again, thanks for watching this video. Reach out, call me anytime. I'd love to educate you on the city, educate you on Georgia, get you moved here. We're just having a ball doing it. Have a great day and I hope to hear from you soon.